Hello everybody. Our experts finally managed to fly over the eruption to do measurements on the lava field, so we've got a lot of new data. Another crater collapse has occurred in the ongoing eruption in Iceland, in the Faraldarsfjall system. This time, it wasn't as large, and happened during the day, meaning the event didn't look as epic as last time. If you tune into the live streams now, you might be wondering where all the lava flows are. Well, for the last couple of days, most of the lava flows have been covered by hardened lava and therefore flow underground, and in some areas you can see how the lava suddenly bursts through the field. The moss fires are still present and still a problem. But on the 26th of July, an army of fire trucks with loads of water were sent to the scene where our firefighters hope to stop the fires or slow them down. But ever since the eruption started, it hasn't rained on the Reykjanes Peninsula, and unfortunately, it won't be doing so anytime soon. Those were the main news in the past three days. Now, let's check out the details. As I mentioned, our experts were finally able to do thorough measurements of the lava field on the 23rd of July. Let's jump straight into the air and take a look at the lava field. On July 23rd, it covered an area of 1.15 square kilometers, which is a 0 0.23 square kilometer increase in five days. But on July 18th, the lava field covered 0 0.92 square kilometers. Most of the expansion happened around the crater, whereas down south, which was once the main expansion area, lava only advanced 200 meters in those five days. The volume the lava field takes is now measured at 12.4 million cubic meters. But if you want the volume of just lava, we have to take into account air pockets and cracks, which can take up 25 to 35 percent of the measured volume. So the volume of erupted lava is probably around 9.3 million cubic meters. So these results give us an average output of 8 cubic meters per second from July 18th to 23rd which is a bit less than the previous 13 cubic meters a second from July 14th to 18th. This shows us that the eruption is still slowing down, but not at the same rate as between previous measurements. As I mentioned in the beginning, another crater collapse occurred. It happened on July 24th. It was much smaller than the previous one on July 19th, but these crater collapses are expected to happen every now and then for the remainder of the eruption. These collapses allow the crater to grow taller, as after they occur, the damage is replaced by a wall with a stronger foundation. If we take a look at the live stream footage on July 26th, we can see how the lava field is basically bloating. You might not have seen it, as the visibility hasn't been the best today. So here's a replay. This happens because most, if not all, the lava flows are now under the hardened lava field. It seems as if a lot of the lava is building up northwest of the crater, pushing up the lava field. The crater has also filled up quite a bit on the 26th, which could lead to another crater collapse in the next couple of hours. But how tall is the crater? On July 23rd, when the most recent data was collected, it was around 32 meters, which means it had on average gained 2.5 meters per day in height since the eruption started on July 10th. So, if we assume it has continued to add 2.5 meters a day, it would stand at around 40 meters as of the making of this video, on July 26th. Now that was a lot of data, but what can we expect in the near future? Well, with the current lava output and lava field expansion, nothing particularly exciting is going to happen in the near future. The lava field will most likely continue to expand around the crater, and the southernmost point will creep forward towards the exit out of Meradalir. The most exciting thing that could happen is another crater collapse, with the east and south sides of the crater being next in line. As we've yet again seen decreased lava output, could the eruption be ending soon? It's not certain, as the eruption does look healthy, and 8 cubic meters per second is still enough to keep it running. But as of the making of this video, the tremor charts are rising rapidly. It could be weather related or something else, but as the crater has been filling up alongside the increase in tremors, it could mean that we're getting a spike in lava output. What that would mean, we can't say for sure. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I just want to thank everyone who made it here. Definitely leave any speculations and questions 
in the comments. It's always fun to read them. Other than that, I just hope you enjoyed. I also hope to see most of you in the next video and thanks for watching.